All right, class. So moving on to gaseous exchange now. So I want you to remember two terms here, external respiration and internal respiration. External respiration is gas exchange between the alveolus and the blood capillaries. So if I draw out an alveolus and a blood capillary. So this exchange is called external respiration. Now the gas exchange between blood and body cells. Let me draw some body cells here. This exchange between body cells and blood this is called internal respiration. So remember, the exchange of respiratory gases between alveolus and blood capillary is external respiration, and the exchange between blood capillary and the body cells is called internal respiration. This, my dear students, is very, very different from cellular respiration. Cellular respiration, remember, it is a process that takes place within the cells. So inside the cell, this is a cell. Remember mitochondria. So cellular respi this is the site of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration takes place within the cells, specifically in the mitochondria. And by this process, glucose is broken down to release energy, ATP. So this is very different from external and internal respiration. Now, for actually this, uh, for internal and, internal and external respiration to take place, we have to have partial pressure difference. So difference in partial pressure is something that motivates this movement of grass down their pressure gradient. And talking about this, um, I want you to remember that um, this was actually mentioned in the gas laws. When we discussed the gas laws, we did talk about the partial pressure and how ga gases move from high pressure to low pressure. All right. So two gas gases that we need to talk about, oxygen and carbon dioxide. We only care about these two. For gaseous exchange, a partial pressure difference must exist always, always. And the pressure difference should be between alveoli and blood. And then there should be another pressure gradient established between the blood and the body cell. As you can see from my little diagram in red here. Okay, so I will actually... Now the question is, how does oxygen get carried into the blood? How, how, how? Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, now what is this Rupa? Let me explain this to you first. So this is your mouth. I know, I know. This part is the trachea and trachea and this expanded black area I'm just showing you an alveolus. So what am what am I skipping? I'm skipping the bronchial tree, I'm skipping all other tubes, right? So I'm directly jumping from the trachea to the alveolus. Super simplified diagram, but I promise you that it'll help you remember the concept better. Okay, so we see the mouth, trachea, and alveolus. What else do we see here? The blue vessel is <coughs> the, 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 so let me change color. This is a capillary, but this capillary contains deoxygenated blood. And the red vessel is also a capillary. This is also capillary. But this one carries oxygenated blood. We'll talk about this a little later. And then we also see the body cells. The green ones are the body cells. 
All right. So before we start, let me divide the alveolus into two halves because that will help me show you the difference. All right. So we'll start with the atmospheric pressure, P atmospheric. Now the partial pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen, so, okay, in the atmosphere is about 160 millimeter of mercury. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide, partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is about 0.25. Do you see it's 0.25 millimeter of mercury? All right. Now, during inspiration, this air will come in. Do you agree? So the air will come in. So uh -uh, it's coming in. Good. Now, as this air comes in, the partial pressure of oxygen becomes. 100 millimeter of mercury and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide becomes 40 millimeter of mercury. Why? Why Rupa? So, so doesn't atmospheric air come inside the alveolus? Yes, it does. Then why is it difference? Why do we have partial pressure of oxygen of um, 160 millimeter of mercury and then inside the alveolus we have 100 millimeter of mercury and similarly partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is 0.25 millimeter of mercury and in the alveolus it's 40 millimeter of mercury how how and why now to explain this concept let's review a little bit do you remember residual volume we did talk about residual volume right what is residual volume? It's a volume of air left in your lungs after forced expiration, after um, expiratory reserve volume, right? And remember that residual volume of air that always remains in the lungs, that is rich in carbon dioxide. So the residual volume, I'll just write it here. Residual volume is rich in carbon dioxide so as we breathe in the atmospheric air gets mixed with this residual volume and that's why the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveolus is changed as compared to the atmospheric pr partial pressures of these gases all right now let's look into the venous end Let's look into the venous end. At the venous end, right here, so here we have blood that has a lot of carbon dioxide. So here, the partial pressure of oxygen is low. It is about 40 millimeter of mercury. And partial pressure of carbon dioxide is, is about 46 millimeter of mercury. Now, can you tell me from here, let me change color. Can you tell me which way will oxygen move? Obviously, oxygen will move from here to here. Which way will carbon dioxide move? Obviously, carbon dioxide will move from here to here, right? All right. So now, what is a changed partial pressure now? Remember, it reverses. It reverses. Therefore, after this exchange, so I'll just put after exchange here. After exchange. After exchange, we will have partial pressure of oxygen of about 100 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide 40 millimeter of mercury okay 
So what happens to the partial pressure of these gases in the alveolus then? Well, in the alveolus, after exchange, after exchange, in the alveolus, partial pressure of oxygen drops to 40 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is about 46 millimeter of mercury. All right. So what do we see here, class? What's the point? The point is that we see that after the gaseous exchange between the capillary and the alveolus, there is obviously change in partial pressure, right? So right here, this is all deoxygenated, right? This was deoxygenated. And after this exchange, if you look here, this is our oxygenated blood. Do you agree? This is highly, highly oxygenated blood. So now this oxygenated blood will come, will travel and then come to the capillary bed supplying the body cells. So this blood will be transported to body cells. So this blood again, let, let me write this down. Partial pressure of oxygen is 100 millimeter of mercury. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 millimeter of mercury. Good. Now what will happen now? Internal respiration. I want you to remember one thing, that these body cells, they are doing a lot of things, right? They're constantly undergoing bio there are so many biochemical reactions taking place and these body cells are producing a lot of carbon dioxide as byproduct so the body cells remember they are hungry for oxygen they are hungry for oxygen so as soon as um, we have these this oxygenated blood coming to the tissues Remember, inside we have partial pressure of oxygen, 40 millimeter of mercury. So there will be rapid exchange, rapid exchange. Oxygen this way, oxygen this way, oxygen this way, oxygen this way. And we will have carbon dioxide out carbon dioxide out carbon dioxide out okay so there is this exchange and after this exchange listen carefully after this exchange the capillary will lose will lose oxygen obviously because remember the body cells are sucking up the body cells are sucking up all the oxygen after this the partial pressure of oxygen becomes oh i should not use this color i should use green the partial pressure of oxygen becomes 40 millimeter of mercury and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is about 46 millimeter of mercury because you know carbon dioxide is being dumped into the capillary and then this will then go to the lungs and there will be further exchange is that clear last thing um last thing this was external respiration and this is internal respiration hope that's clear i'll start with a new video